Before we play part one of the Halloween event, we need to go over everything for part two and the Dia de Muertos event. I'm Alex Gum, aka Chicle, and welcome to Pokemon Go Ahead. Yes, let's go! Ah, Chinese, you see? Back to back! Oh my god! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> so while you guys are watching this video, part one of the Halloween event is going to be live right now. So you're going to see a vlog around Saturday or Sunday depending on how long we take searching for shiny glaring Yamask, Noibat, and other good stuff. But if you guys want to know what the field research task and the time research is and the special research task are, I got you covered. Also, shout out to Leak Duck for providing these graphics. It's very informational. So let's start with the field research task. Last time we talked about the Hellion events, I was concerned about both Yamask and Galarian Yamask being 50-50 instead of having their own. And Thank goodness that they have their own task because we get to go for the Galarian Yam Mask and the task is super simple. So for Shuppin and Duskull, we had to catch five Pokemon that are ghost type and obviously we have too many shinies. We don't have to worry about that one. Catch 10 ghost types for the Unova Yam Mask and then you have to catch 25 ghost types for Galarian Yam Mask. Yes, that sounds like a lot of ghost types, but considering that we have so many spawning for the event, this is going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. Thank God we don't have to hatch an egg or do a raid. It's just catching ghost types. That's it. And then we have to walk five kilometers for Phantom. Although it is not shiny, Trevorant is actually one of the best Pokemon to use for PvP. I want to say for Great League, but honestly, I've never used Trevorant or done PvP in a while. Next up, we have the special research called the Mysterious Mask. This is a four step research and pretty much you get at least four encounters of the Galarian Yamask and I think three of the Unovan Yamask. You guys can finish this whenever you want because there's no time limit. So that is really awesome considering that we have a free access for at least more than one Galarian Yamask. Now remember we have two different time researches and you have to pay for both of these. The first one is the Yamask time research and that is for one dollar. The question is is it worth doing? Let's go over it. So it is a two step research. Overall, for both tasks, you just have to catch 30 ghost types for both steps. That's it. And then you have at least eight encounters of the Unova Yamask, and then you have at least eight for the second step for the Galarian Yamask. And if you are lucky, you can get a shiny. I got so jealous. I saw Zoe Two Dots video. She got a shiny from one of those tasks. So, not to get my hopes high, but we are going to try to finish this when we're going to try to shiny hunt. Also, I'm hinting that I'm going to buy the $1 one for content sakes, but let's talk about the $5 one because the question is, is it worth doing comparing to the $1 one? It's a four steps, um, and obviously there is one glaring yam mask. There is a regular yam mask. There's a couple other like spawns that resemble bats, spiders, cats but there's one encounter for Spirit Tomb. And of course, there are some tasks where you have to walk two kilometers, you have to catch and transfer Pokemon, you have to make certain amount of throws and all that stuff. So I think with the walking, um, you just have to make sure you're out and walking if you wanna do this one. And also, it depends if you desperately need a Spirit Tomb. This is the only Spirit Tomb that's gonna appear for the Halloween event because it's never around. Now, I already have a Shiny Spirit Tomb from a previous Halloween event, so I really don't have to worry about it too much. Although you do get extra candy bonuses for the event alone, I'm just going to ignore the $5 in time research. I know I want to do it for content, but I'd rather do the $1 because, hey, I want to grind for that shiny glaring yen mask instead of paying $5 for just one encounter in the spirit tomb that's less likely going to be shiny. Now to change the topic a little bit, we did get some details a couple days ago about a little mini event that's going to happen after the Halloween event, and that is the Dia de Muertos event. As you can see right here, you can see that Duskull has like this Day of the Dead crown called a Simpachio... I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that name, but that's what it's called. This event is going to be running on Tuesday, November 1st at 10 a.m. local time through Wednesday, November 2nd at 8 p.m. local time. That is not enough time, guys. You know, if you really want to do this event, you got to 
do it at you know at the most free time that you have as possible. I don't think I'm going to do this event because I don't think I'm going to have free time considering that I'm going to work and do tech for a show that's coming up in a couple of weekends. So we're obviously not going to do this event, uh, but let's go over the details anyway. The bonuses are going to be 90 minute duration of both lure modules and incense and then two times catch candy just like the Halloween event. Of course, these are gonna be the spawns in the wild, but if you're somewhere in Latin America or the Caribbean or any region that celebrates the Day of the Dead, you're going to have a huge increase on these spawns. So here in the Northern America, we're not gonna have that many spawns, but here are the spawns. Cubone, Chin Chow, Sunkern, Rosalia, Litwick, Swirlix, and if you are lucky, Duskull with the Crappy Crown, Drifloon, and Yamask. So everything can be shiny. Liquid just had a community day. Chin Chow was recently released for a Festival of Light event with a boost of shiny rates. Swirlix was exclusive for the Go Fest events. So if you need the shiny Swirlix, that'd be a good time to go after it. Otherwise, Neon Mask is going to be part of the Halloween events. I already have enough shiny Drift Loon. I honestly have all these shinies. And again, I could care less about the Dust Skull. Now, yes, it will be an exclusively rare shiny for those who are crazy about shiny hunting those costumes. But don't expect me to be hype about this. Now you get increased chance of spawns encountering from lure modules and incense, such as Cubone, Sunkern, Sunflora, Rosalia, Drifloon, Yamask, Swirlix, and if you are lucky, Duskull with the Crown, and Houndoom. And Houndoom can be shiny because of Mega Houndoom being released in Pokemon Go. So that would be a good spawn to go after. And then in raids, literally Duskull is the only tier one boss and I'm gonna decline every single raid invite because I am not raiding for this stupid Duskull. I'm sorry, I don't like it. I just don't like it. Three star raid bosses, we have Dragonite, which I would ignore because we have the Dratini Community Day Classic on November 5th. We have Sableye and Drudagon, which are shiny potentials. Although I would avoid Sableye because we do have the Halloween events. Drudagon depends if you need it for the Dex or the Shiny. And then of course we have the origin form of Giratina and Mega Bayonet still in five star raids. Note to self that this is gonna be after the Halloween event. So Giratina will not learn Shadow Force during Dia de Los Muertos. Just wanna give you a heads up. And then of course for Phil Research Task Encounters, we have Cubone, Roselia, Litwick, and if you're lucky, Houndoom and Duskull with the crown. And then of course that there is a Dia de Muertos collection challenge coming soon. If you complete it, you can get an encounter for a Lolan Marowak, a Poffin, and an Incense. Now we have part two that was announced yesterday. And looking at this promo picture for part two, oh, I'm a little worried because as you can see in this picture, there's a lot of costume Pokemon that are coming. I'm just not a huge fan of costumes. I'm just gonna flat out say it. I just don't like costume Pokemon. They're so dumb. I get it, it's Halloween. I get it, but dude, they better not be dropping more than what's on this picture. They please, please. The Pokemon Go Halloween Part 2 is gonna be starting next Thursday, October 27th through Tuesday, November 1st at 10 a.m. And then it immediately goes to the Dia de Muertos events. So obviously, most of the stuff that has been introduced for part one of the event is going to continue for part two. We're gonna go over all of that. So the bonuses are pretty much the same as part one, which is the candy bonuses. Bull picks with a costume, which will evolve into nine tails with a costume. Gengar gets a hat for some reason. Good news is it's in raids, so I'm going to decline every raid invite for that stupid costume Pokemon. I don't care how festive it looks. Then we have Pumpkaboo. The good news is Pumpkaboo can finally be shiny in Pokemon Go. I just don't like it how they had to introduce the shiny with the costume. It just sucks. Why have Pumpkaboo for part one and then just add a costume on top of the shiny when they could have just left Pumpkaboo plain? It's bad enough that we have four different sizes of Pumpkaboo. It would be more rare enough to get a, you know, like... <laughs> And then we, does that mean we have to wait for like November for a Pumpkaboo encounter? Or do we have to wait for next year for a regular shiny Pumpkaboo? That's really boring. I'm sorry. No. Anyway, part two is going to kind of switch up a little bit with the spawns, especially since they're adding costume Pokemon and the costume Pokemon from last year. Yikes. Pikachu and Piplup are back from last year. I don't need any of those. And then of course Vulpix and Pumpkaboo are in the wild. Yes, I'm excited for the shiny Pumpkaboo. I would be more excited if it didn't have a costume, but I'll try to get a shiny Pumpkaboo nonetheless. 
We also have Zubat, Haunter, Spinarak, Murkrow, Mistrevis, Sableye, Shuppet, Dusclops, Yamask, and Phantom also spawning in the wild. We also have one star rate bosses, which are pretty much the same as part one. And then for three star rates, it's the same, but the difference is Gengar and Driftblimp will actually have costumes. And then of course, Giratina and Mega Bennett, we all know that. Field research task, although we don't know what the tasks are, these are the following Pokemon that will have the research task. Hopefully the Yamask and the Galarian Yamask are the exact same as part one. And that's pretty much it. Next time, we'll be posting a video of our adventure, trying to catch some shiny Pokemon for the Halloween events. And of course, we are going to do the shiny challenge that if we get a shiny, we open a pack. If we get a Galarian Yamask, or a Noibat or a Pumpkaboo, we're gonna open two packs. We have at least 26 left. We opened 14 last time after Liquid Calm Day. So be sure to check it out, see if we get something good. All right guys, see you next time. Peace out.